I was born in Tel Aviv, Israel, which is a wonderful city and full of innovation and startups. My last position was in Herzog Fox Neiman, which is today the largest uh, commercial law firm in Israel. So we have a lot to do in order to achieve that. Uh, and every day it's a celebration. I wake up in the morning, everything starts from the beginning, and a lot of work and a lot of missions to accomplish. As I say, as an umbrella organization, consists of most of the sectors of the ecosystem. It means that under the IETI, there are many, many, many hundreds of paying uh, members in the level of the CEOs. So we have like the venture capital funds, we have the multinational companies, the R&D center, the gross and the unicorns, the Israeli. The amount in each transaction, investment transaction, has grew in 2021. The size of the, of, the, of the investment is bigger, but less investments. Hello, everybody. Good day, uh, dear listeners and colleagues. Today is a guest, our guest at our, at our podcast. Uh, is um, Mrs. Karin Meyer Rubinstein, CEO and President in Israel Advanced Technology Industry, IATI. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> so um, uh, she's uh, she uh, it's first it's it's her first visit in Uzbekistan. Uh, hello, uh, Ms. Rubinstein. Very happy to see you uh, at our podcast studio. Um, welcome to Uzbekistan. It's your first visit, as I know. Yes, Uzbekistan. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. It is my first visit in uh, Uzbekistan, and I am very thrilled about it. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Rubinstein. If you permit me, I will call you Karin. Please. Do. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Karin. Uh, please uh, tell me about um, your. How did you come to innovation industry, and what was your biography? Uh, what would you, what have you studied? Wow. Okay, so um, I was born in Tel Aviv, Israel, which is a wonderful city and full of innovation and startups. And actually, I'm eighth generation in Israel, which is quite remarkable uh, because we are a very young country. Um, I started like everybody started, you know, I went to uh, school, to high school, then uh, went to, um, after I s when start started uh, my academic years, I uh, did my first degree in economy in Tel Aviv University, uh, then also first degree in law. Um, yes, I'm a lawyer for many years. <laughs> And then uh, my second degree in um, finance and business, business administration. And then actually I practiced uh, law uh, for quite many years. Uh, I was a senior. Being in Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. I was a senior partner and managing of all the uh, business development uh, in the largest commercial law firms in Israel. My last position was in Herzog Fox Neiman, which is today the largest uh, commercial law firm in Israel. And through uh, these years, I had the pleasure to do legal work for uh, high tech and for companies and for startups and for investment uh, and uh, VC funds, and also uh, representing um, many multinational companies in Israel in their day-to-day -day activity, in their transaction. Uh, so um, I got familiar a lot with the industry. Um, and then uh, I was asked to come and to do the merger of all the organizations, the non-profit organization of high tech in Israel. So it was the Venture Capital Association and High Tech Association and Life Science Association. And actually, 
after um, I said yes immediately. Uh, and then when I um, started, um, I actually um, decided to start the IATI from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, you were the founder of IATI. Yes. Mm. Yes, and um, there was the vision of taking all the organization together. Okay, and that is why I was called to okay. to do the execution of this vision. So yeah, so I founded the IATI, <laughs> and um, it was not so easy in the beginning. Okay, why? Because um, you need to set up the goals. Uh, you need to have the members. You need you need to have all the companies um, uh, under uh, the IATI, and of course to bring the value. Always think about how to bring the value. Um, I can say that after a few years with a lot, a lot of work and building the team, um, I can tell you that IATI uh, today is the umbrella organization. Mm -hmm. of all the high-tech and life science industry and other advanced industries, including food tech and agri-tech and uh, many other uh, advanced technology industries. So it's a private, IATI is a private uh, non-profit organization. And it goes, its goal is to promote and enhance uh, the high-tech industry in Israel and to make sure it stays the growth engine of the state of Israel, most important uh, industry in Israel, and also uh, one of the world's uh, leading uh, industries. So we have a lot to do in order to achieve that. Uh, and every day it's a celebration. I wake up in the morning, everything starts from the beginning, mm -hmm. and a lot of work and a lot of missions to accomplish. And I really, really love what I do. Okay, thank you very much. But uh, everybody knows about uh, the success of uh, Israeli innovation ecosystem. Uh, could you tell a little about innovations in Israel, the history, and what is the secret sauce, secret component? Because other countries tried also and trying also <coughs> to repeat Israel in success story. And uh, what is the secret component for the success of Israel? So thank you for the question. Maybe I'll go back a little bit and I will connect it to your question. Um, actually, the IATI, as I said, is an umbrella organization, consists of most of the sectors of the ecosystem. It means that under the IATI, there are many, many, many hundreds of paying uh, members in the level of the CEOs. So we have like the venture capital funds, we have the multinational companies, the R&D center, the growth and the unicorns, the Israeli companies, the startups, the incubators, the hospital, the academia, the service providers. So actually most of the ecosystem is under the IATI umbrella and we know to synchronize all these um, um, goals and missions uh, um, to, 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 to the big picture. So it relates to innovation in Israel. So what is the innovation in Israel and the ecosystem and why it is so strong? So I'll, maybe I will give you some, some few figures. Please. Uh, financial figures. Yes, um, it's important. <laughs> from only recently. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 43% um, uh, of the export in Israel is from high tech, which is quite remarkable. All, all, almost forty-three. Almost half of the of the export mm. in Israel is from high tech. Twenty-five uh, percent of the income tax is from high tech employees. Twenty-five percent. Mm -hmm. uh, Fifteen percent of the GDP is from high tech. Uh, it grew in the last five years from 10% uh, to 15%. And um, if we compare um, R&D as a percentage of GDP 
uh, Israel is ranked uh, number one uh, in the world. Um, 10% of the employees uh, in, uh, in Israel are in high tech. And we, we, we are going, we talk about it later, but we will do now our best effort to bring it to 15%. Mm -hmm. It's a national goal, it's a governmental goal that the new prime minister uh, set. And um, one of the most amazing figures is really from uh, uh, two weeks ago, is that, you know, all the world talk about unicorn, about gross companies, about the $1 billion company. So in 2021, during the pandemic, during the coronavirus, um, 27 new unicorn have been established in Israel. And the most amazing about it is it, this is these 27 companies, unicorns that has been established during 2021, uh, comprise of 10%, 10% of all the unicorns, of all the gross companies uh, that were, that, that were um, uh, the new unicorn uh, in 2021 in the world. 10% of world unicorns On world unicorns is Israeli. in 2021, the new, the new, uh, the new unicorns, the new gross companies, mm -hmm. the companies who got to $1 billion and more, 10% mm -hmm. of those uh, are by, uh, are by um, um, founders, um, Israeli, Israeli founder and in Israel. So yeah, very uh, yes, uh, impressive uh, statistics because I remember I have read uh, an article and uh, before 1994, uh, the 85% of export of Israel was oranges. As I remember, it was like, like this, the statistic. And in uh, 10 or 20 years, less than 20 years, impressive. So this kind of success. So what was this uh, secret sauce? So what who, do you have? So who what, knows? You, what Israel has? <laughs> as a, because every, every every country tries to to repeat this. So actually, I think that you know some will say these are the reason for the success, and some will say no, there are not the reason. There are other reasons for the success. And I can tell you that last week uh, we published that uh, during uh, um, the three first quarters of 2021 during the coronavirus. Uh, the high-tech ecosystem has ra have raised $17 billion to high-tech companies, okay? Again, you know, how come during the coronavirus, you know, high-tech um, uh, high company raised... Israelian. Israeli in Israel, $17 billion. Uh, dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, if I can go back, uh, I think we can find f few reasons that I think uh, are our main reasons. And then are a lot of other reasons. But uh, first of all, I think uh, we are talking about uh, the culture and the entrepreneurial spirit of the people and the young people in Israel. The entrepreneurial spirit, the culture. Uh, and it means that um, everybody wants to be entrepreneurs in Israel. Um, and there is a, the entrepreneurship um, um, uh, culture is well accepted in Israel. It's good to be entrepreneur. So, so the your students, parents, your parents are proud of you if you are entrepreneur. Serious? Yes. Yes. If you if you tell, for example, the school, the student tells to fathers, I, I want to be, I want to build startup. <laughs> so the parents uh, they tell, oh wow, it's a. It's, it's sexy. So, you know, the Jewish mother, the joke about the Jewish mother, they Tell always me, say, they always say, mm -hmm. back then they said, oh, I don't, I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be a lawyer. I want you to be a banker or accountant. Mm -hmm. But today, uh, it's so okay mm -hmm. to be entrepreneur, to have your own startups, mm -hmm. to start, maybe to fail, to start again, maybe to fail again. It's not uh, a very big thing if you fail. 
like may, maybe in other cultures uh, around the world. It's okay to fail. It's also it's okay to start again. It's I think this is one of uh, the, uh, uh, the secrets. Um, I think other ingredients for this success during the years, I can talk about, uh, first of all, uh, the DNA. Uh, of mm-hmm. the population in Israel and the in, 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 in the geopolitical situation in Israel. So as you know, uh, Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. We are located in the Middle East, by the way, we are nine million people, 24,000 square kilometers, very, very small. I think we are in the signs of New Jersey. Okay, <laughs> all Israel. By population of our square meters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And, um, and, 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 and we are the only democracy uh, in the Middle East. And it's well known that we are surrounded uh, with um, uh, some of the countries that surround Israel are not very good friends uh, with Israel. I hope it would change uh, in the next years, uh, but still this is the situation. So everybody in Israel, you know, um, h- um, think how to develop, like constant threat lead to high awareness. Uh, so we are always on high awareness. Okay. So in universities, the, uh, every, by, I don't know if every university, where do, do, do students, the young people, Because to do entrepreneurship, uh, you, you need to learn. Yes, it's you, need, not, it's, you, you yes. need to learn, but, yes. but, but you need to learn, but you can do it also because uh, it's part of your DNA. You know, you wake up in the morning, you say, okay, what is the next thing that I, will, if I have to do? Okay. Um, what is the next things uh, that we have to develop? Uh, how to uh, even to protect ourselves, even it's not protection, but um, so um, it's it's part of the DNA, and, uh, and 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 this is very important to understand. It's very it's very fundamental. Uh, other reasons, by the way, are very good infrastructure that we have in Israel. For example, we have very good legal infrastructure. Mm-hmm. We have very good accounting and banking infrastructure. Um, it's relatively easy to make, uh, legally wise, to make like the deals, you know, the agreements. Um, um, it's, it's, it's going fast, uh, no a lot of obstacles in the way. All the parties and all the sides of the agreement are very uh, professionals, so it makes uh, things um, uh, more, e- more, uh, uh, more easy in that, in that sense. And we just add, And then I will um, come back to your question that let's not forget that we have the military service, which is a big part uh, of uh, the success and a, a big part of the ingredients for success um, of, of this ecosystem, of the high-tech ecosystem. You know, we have the technology units, are very famous, the technology units. All the people in Israel, boys and girls, uh, must go to the army when they finish high school. And uh, some of them go to the technology unit and from the technology unit, you know, they are right straight away uh, to work in the big companies in Israel, in the multinational companies in Israel, or building their own startup. Very, very talented people. And if And even if you're not part of the technology unit and you just go to the army, So just imagine that in the age of 20, you can be a commander of many, many people, many, many dozens of people. So you get in very early stage, you get managerial skills that help you in the future okay. uh, to, to, su- to succeed. So a lot of ingredients, I only touch a few of them. Okay. Um, this is part of it. And uh, how about government's rule? Because uh, I think without government strategy, uh, this success wouldn't be achieved, achieved maybe. How government, uh, how, how was the limits or obligations or the role of government in this? Who, which sector, private <coughs> sector or government sector was the like locomotive yes. for this? Oh, great question. 
I think and I believe that the government has a very important role. Mm. Um, and maybe I will try to explain. Um, 30 years ago, when the VC industry started, it, it was called the Yozma, uh, Yozma initiation. Um, the government says, okay, um, we will build a VC ecosystem. There was not any. And um, the high tech started before, but I'm talking about the investors. Because, you know, each ecosystem has investors, has entrepreneurs, has academia, has government. Okay, it's all go together. And uh, the government says, okay, we will give the money to build 10 venture capital funds. Mm -hmm. We will bring the money and we would like to see matching from the private investors. On every dollar we put, the investor will put a, a dollar. And this is how the first 10 venture capital funds uh, were established. And this was the beginning of everything, this Yosma program. Since then, uh, there was an immigration also in the early 90s. We were, I think that in the early 90s, Israel consists of 5 million people in population. And then there was the big immigration from Russia. So 1 million Russian people came to Israel immigrate in Israel, did Aliyah, it's called they, they came to Israel. It's 20% increase in the population. In one year? Yes, in very in short, short one mm -hmm. year, two years, very, very, in, in very short time, it was like amazing. And, um, and part of this uh, population who came, of this one million people, were engineers, were professors, were uh, technicians, were uh, a lot of other things that the industry needed and they were in, in substantial part of this uh, creation of the ecosystem uh, in Israel. Then came the incubator program of the government with the help of all the people who came from Russia. It's uh, under umbrella of Yosma. The incubator program mm -hmm. um, was another uh, initiative uh, of the government mm -hmm. and um, with the help, with a lot of the Russian immigration uh, to Israel. And this is uh, um, practically where it's all, uh, with, or, where it's all started. After that, a lot of money started to come uh, through the VC to the high tech. And more and more venture capital funds have been established, private but one. Private, but from Israeli or from USA or European Israeli. capitals? Israeli, it was uh, it, it was uh, Israeli venture capital fund, but uh, a lot of the money came from outside of Israel. For such country is from the of course mostly from the United States mm -hmm. and then Canada mm -hmm. and then even uh, Europe um, and other countries, also from the institutional investors uh, outside of Israel and of course from then from Israeli investors uh, as well. Uh, and from year to year, we see the in growth uh, in, um, in, um, in the capital that come to the high-tech industry, either directly to the high-tech companies or through the venture capital funds who invest in these uh, high startup companies. Now, uh, today, after few cycles, there were a few cycles, the VC funds were, were up and they were down and go, they went up again and down. Um, you know, they are also the, the, the outside economic, um, uh, there were crisis and then it was good. Um, and actually today we have, um, at least 100 venture capital funds, good ones, very good ones in Israel. Um, we have uh, around 200 VC funds, uh, small and medium and big ones. Mm -hmm. And um, 200 VC funds. Yes. And how many? Um, some of them startups? are small, some of them are big, yes. but uh, they are divided to early stage VC. Mm -hmm. 
VC that invest in early stage startup and then late stage and medium stage, they are divided to VC funded um, that um, invest in high tech or in life science and healthcare and health tech. They are divided also for Israeli VC or foreign VC that have operation in Israel. So it's very diverse, but you know, in Israel, you can find some of the venture capital funds uh, all together, you know, if they raise few uh, funds, you know, some of them already raised one more than $1 billion, those VC funds, it's a lot of money. And they invested uh, all, um, there are VC funds who have like more, more than seven funds already, each fund. Um, so um, 2021 was a very good year for the VT fund, 2020 as well. And please not forget the coronavirus. And But it was a record year, 2021 and 2020 was a rec record year and investment in Israel. Is there and, some statistics? Yes, and not just investment, yeah. So uh, not just investment, but also uh, exits. So I can talk about few things about statistics. Um, the amount in each transaction, investment transaction, ha has grew in 2021. The size of the, tr the, of the, of the investment is bigger but less investments. Yeah, so every check is bigger. So yes, every check is bigger. Every check, okay. And, but uh, less transactions. Mm -hmm. I can tell you also that if we talk about um, exits, mm -hmm. so it was amazing if we talk about IPOs and the SPACs uh, in NASDAQ and in uh, um, uh, another stock exchange, mm -hmm. but uh, we saw some major IPOs and this pact that we have never seen before. Uh, I can tell you about some unicorns that only recently uh, did the, an IPO or a SPAC in the, in the amount of $10 billion, $5 billion, $11 billion, a $13 billion valuation. It's numbers that we have really haven't seen before and um, we predict that it will um, continue uh, also in 2022. Okay, <sighs> okay. You have mentioned about Yosma program and yes. one of these characteristic is in the beginning that the government told to private sector, I put one dollar and you put one dollar. So my question is, for example, I imagine private sector uh, I, I put one million as private sector, a government uh, take also one million. What is the uh, value for me for private sector? <coughs> because mm, what, what I want to tell, okay, together we have invested to, in, to startups. Uh, we have lost money. Mm -hmm. uh, so the government will ask me or not the money. The first question. The second question. If there is success, uh, the government take the interest rate or not. So what is the, the main value of the, this format? Uh, no, the, the, um, overall, I can tell you that it's all about sharing the risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the beginning, you know, one side, you know, the private sector didn't know that they can take the risk. He didn't say, mm -hmm. okay, we'll take the risk. So the government said, okay, we will share uh, the risk. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, now, the government is not an um, entity who, uh, that need to, you know, show the, the ROI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is, it's the government. Return of investment. You yes, know. yes, the, the return on investment. Thank you. It's not uh, the KPI. Of government. Yeah, it's not the KPI of government. They, and what is the government KPI? I think the government KPI is to make sure that we have a successful country, okay, and to bring new things to the table. And if there is, and most importantly, if there is a market failure, if there is a market failure, the government should intensify this market failure and propose and bring the plans to the table 
uh, and the various solutions in order to uh, solve uh, together with the industry this market failure. And it happened uh, throughout the years, even if it was the, uh, with regards to uh, investment in high tech. And then it was also like, even recently that we say, okay, you know, the life science, the healthcare industry is not treated um, as, as we want to see. So let's invest more um, and put more resources in the healthcare and health tech industry. Um, so for sure, I see the government role uh, um, as a very important role to understand what is the market failure or what are the micro market failures, okay? And to interact with the industry, but really interact, to collaborate on a very high level with the industry in order to find uh, solutions. And, and this is where the IATI, which I am the head of, um, this is where the IATI come into the picture because we are considered to be the voice of the industry. We have the, we have the innovation authority, which is in, of Israel, it's a governmental entity, which is under the Ministry of Innovation and Science. Okay, no, so- you are under the ministry. No, no. We, we have the innovation authority. No, authority it's a okay. governmental entity, big one. Okay. And, uh, and uh, um, it, it is under the, the government. And this is the innovation entity of the government. And the IATI, which is the innovation entity of the industry, um, is, um, is uh, actually the voice of the industry. Why? Because with the help of all our uh, companies and all our members, okay, that we interact with them very, very uh, tightly on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we identified the challenges. Either it's human capital challenges, regulation challenges, tax challenges, but mainly making sure that the, everything will stay stable, the economy will stay stable, and we care about ease of doing business, that it will be easy to do business. That is what we are pushing for. And part of it is, is, is the human capital, of course, and tax, etc. So most important for me as the head of IATI is the collaboration. Uh, first of all, among all the sectors of the industry, as I said, startup and, and big high tech companies, and venture capital and multinationals and incubators and all, all, all of them, okay, that we speak all the time with each other and understand and have um, and um, uh, interact. And the second thing is to collaborate very well with the government. That's why I am a great believer in what it's called PPP. It's private public partnership. All the time thinking about private public partnership, the industry. In innovation industry. Yes, it, the, 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 indus the it industry. It's nice to have or must have. I think that, uh, you know, I think it can be done maybe without, but the result will not be the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that we must uh, interact. Uh, we must uh, find the solution together. Um, the government should know when to, where to interfere and where, where not to interfere. Uh, this is very important to understand. Um, a lot of the people and the industry, most of the industry, um, not necessarily uh, need the assistance of the government unless there is a market failure and, in, and where, in, where we identify this market failure, for sure we need the help and the assistance uh, of, the, of the government, whether if we're talking about grants if you're talking about governmental plans, national plans, for example, we have shortage of 15,000 engineers in Israel now. We don't have enough high-level qualified 
uh, employees in Israel. It's happening in a lot of other places in the world. So we need very much the plans of the government and um, all kinds of plans that the government can uh, provide. I think that only hand in hand uh, we, can, uh, we can work together uh, in order to make sure that, uh, that we stay uh, and the high tech we stay the growth engine in Israel and one of the world leading industries. And how many members do you have now? <coughs> hmm. We have many members. We have many, many hundreds of members. Many, many hundreds. So and what is the main value that you, they receive from, so from, from it, being the member of association? So, wow, it's a great question. So, first of all, and before all, is the um, success that we bring in talking and operating with the government. Either mm. it's tax incentives, either it's that um, preventing, ha- preventing harmful regulation, uh, either it's uh, by, um, by um, jointly um, bring um, new plans and solutions to the challenges with the government. So this is first of all. And after that, um, the members, the value of the members um, is um, we, br- we bring a lot of uh, business development and creating business opportunities uh, for our members, starting from a lot of introductions in the ecosystem, a lot of matching, many hundreds of events, small events. It can be like 10 people in a round table. It can be webinars. It can be big seminars. It can be big conferences. Um, another value I think is that IATI uh, provides on a daily basis in, um, a lot of information, a lot of statistics, information, reports, surveys all the time. And, and m- most important is that the IATI, we provide a lot of information from around the world because we uh, know uh, that uh, the competition in the world, the worldwide competition and the competitors around the world is just getting more and more. And uh, we would like to know very much what's going on everywhere in the world and to bring this information to the members. It means that statistics from all around the world, um, reports from the States and from Europe and from Asia and from, um, from South America and from wherever, a lot of statistics, um, a lot of collaboration with other organizations I met here a wonderful organization only yesterday in our conference. I, may, I met here in Uzbekistan, amazing uh, organization and incubators and uh, uh, the techno park. Um, so um, the, I will take all of these and bring it uh, to the knowledge of the members so they can interact and they can cooperate. And they will tell me, Karin, you know, you must introduce me to this one or this one, I would like to see how we can work together. I believe that uh, the world is a small place. I believe in sharing best practices with everybody. Uh, I believe that, yes, Israel is a successful place if you talk about high tech and life science and healthcare, and we have to bring from our knowledge uh, to the rest of the world. And of course, uh, to hear what the other places and other countries in the world uh, have and from their experience, and to bring it uh, to Israel. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you talk about with passion about your profession, <laughs> and uh, how uh, do you love? Don't you regret that you have chosen this profession and? Uh, what in this because you, the the domain that we, we work it's innovation domain high tech domain there <coughs> is other domain too are our industries but innovation industry it's a recently new industry recently and uh, which components or which characteristic do you love and uh, is it your lifestyle and uh, which component of this uh, your work do you love the, the love, most? Love the question. My father always told me, and he's still telling me that, Karin, 
uh, never regret uh, what you do, only regret what you don't do. Okay, okay. so I never regret on what I do. I really, really love my role. And uh, I think that the main reason I love what I do is because uh, I love to contribute uh, and I love to give. And um, uh, I think it's part of who I am and how I grew up. Um, I really, really like uh, the process of things and I even more like the results. <laughs> so uh, so for me, it uh, brings me a lot of uh, ambitions. And um, the innovation uh, ecosystem, the, uh, the, we say the, 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 the high-tech industry is fascinating. It's fascinating. I learn every day when I wake up in the morning. We have full of things to do when I wake up in the morning. I believe that, you know, it's like a mission to wake up in the morning and to continue to push and to do things uh, uh, to promote uh, whatever you decided to promote. Um, I truly believe that the most important ingredient of all this ecosystem of the high tech in Israel are the, uh, the, the entrepreneurs themselves. Those are the most important thing, even uh, either if they are the younger people or not, less younger people, but those are our main uh, resources, resource uh, of the of the of, of the high tech industry. Uh, we have to make sure they continue uh, to develop. They that, that they will continue to think about new disruptive uh, technologies that they will be the first to say, oh, I have this idea, you know, now I want to solve this idea. We have to bring them and give them uh, all the um, necessary uh, back and background and background and uh, facilities and resources in order for them uh, uh, to feel good and to, be, to continue to be creative. Because again, this is the main source of the high tech uh, in Israel. Thank you, uh, Karen. Thank you for you for sharing your thoughts. So my uh, my question is, I, I would like to know about your impression. Because yesterday you had a meeting and workshop with the players of local Uzbek innovation ecosystems. You met with startups, with incubators, accelerators, government uh, policymakers, etc. So. Uh, what is your impression as it is your first visit in Uzbekistan before you didn't know about innovation ecosystem in Uzbekistan? So after meeting with them, what is your impression? Okay, so actually I arrived here like two week, two days ago, two days, I think. Yes, two days. And it feels like I'm here for one month. Okay. I don't know if because... Uh, if because um, we had very, very tight and busy schedule from morning to night. Um, and I'm very thankful for it uh, because I met ministers, deputy ministers, um, high level senior officials. I met the incubators and the, the, and, and, and the organization yesterday and then the conference and the, and the park. And, um, and not just that, I met the local people here um, and talked to quite a lot of young people and just wanted to know more and more all the time, just to listen and to understand and to observe. And I can tell you that I am deeply, deeply, deeply impressed after two days, okay? And I'm not saying that because we heard the podcast. I'm saying that because I didn't know what to accept what to expect. I was invited here and uh, I, I, I'm invited to many places to come. And I told myself, Karin, you know, you sit and listen, you observe, and then you'll say, and, you, 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 and, and th then you decide what you think. And still it's very early to talk about the ecosystem of Uzbekistan and what I saw here, but for, I can tell you for sure um, the potential is huge 
Now, I will tell you also, and I told it yesterday uh, evening, um, definitely you have an ecosystem here that functioning uh, because you have young people, and I just learned that uh, 60% of the population in, is under the age of 30 here. And I also learned, if I'm not years. mistaken, that the average age is 27. 27 years old. Yes. It's unbelievable. Okay, so uh, the human uh, capital for sure is here. Uh, the energies are very high. Uh, and the enthusiasm of the people when they talk, they say, I want to do that and I want to do that. And I have a program and I have a, 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 an idea for startups. And, they, and, and, and I see people that are full, who are full of energy. Um, I still um, want to make sure what's, uh, what's my impression. I'm not, um, because I haven't seen enough about the academia. I heard there is a very good academia here. So this is a big part also of this triangle of, of the industry, academia, government. And with regard to the government, uh, I can tell you that after speaking with, I think, quite a lot of people in two days and very high level people, uh, that uh, there is willingness and uh, that uh, from the government and the government, I, with whoever I talked, they are going for full power in order uh, to make sure that uh, Uzbekistan will be a leading player, player in the next recent year. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, Karin, uh, so uh, what would be, uh, on two days, you, you learned about uh, light deep, yes, light, light, light deep on ecosystem. How, how would be your recommendations and overall recommendations for government, corporate or private sector? How would be uh, on, on building the strategy and building innovation economy in Uzbekistan. How would be your recommendation in these stages? Because as, as, as we know, innovation ecosystem in Uzbekistan in early development stage, mm -hmm. but as you told, uh, there is a big potential. So maybe some recommendations or uh, your thought about it. I'm sorry that I think that I'm not uh, in the position right now to give recommendation. Okay. I, it's, all, it's really only two mm -hmm. days. And mm -hmm. actually, I have few things in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I'm smarter or wiser than any other people uh, that see and that or I, I'm not smarter than a, a lot of here, the people here that, you know, do it every day and wake up in the morning and want to have um, a thriving ecosystem. So... Um, I will have to, uh, you know, I will have to take my time for that. But for sure, I can say that the government uh, is and will have a leading role, but really a leading role uh, in the next few years. Uh, I can almost sure when I'll tell you that I think from other ecosystem that I saw that um, if there is a champion in the government, uh, and I think I identify and I saw some champions uh, that says, for me, this is what important. I would like to push ahead and to bring everything I can in order for us uh, to promote the high tech in Uzbekistan. This, is, uh, this will be very important. I think that the venture capital uh, industry uh, can have a lot of potential because um, the venture capital industry is based on entrepreneurs. And I can see that the entrepreneurs, you know, a lot of uh, good entrepreneurs and, uh, and uh, young people um, in this area. So I think that the VC industry has to get a real push um, in order to be a uh, uh, bigger and more influential. Um, I'm really, really happy to see that, uh, that the Association of Venture Capital Funds has been established. Uh, it's, a, it's a big step. Um, <laughs> and I hope and I hope I can be of any assistance in order to even uh, strengthen and to promote uh, your uh, Uzbekistan 
Uzbek uh, VC Association. Um, and this is, will be only the beginning of what we can do here and what we can do here and we can do a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Karin. So thank you for visiting Uzbekistan. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you for your recommendations. Thank you for uh, listening our startups and ecosystem players. Uh, I hope the next year visit will not be in, in very, very long <coughs> time. It will be shortly in, 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 uh, in, in shortly time. And uh, I would like when taking this occasion to thanks also, I, I think you will be also agree to thanks Mr. Uh, Mrs. Ambassador of Uzbekistan in Israel, Firuz Yildashuna Mahmudova, uh, which was uh, organize, or, or, the ideologue of your coming. Am I right? She is. Most important, really, is this time to thank uh, Mrs. Ambassador, Mrs. Ambassador, the Ambassador yes. of Uzbekistan in Israel. I met her a while ago, almost a few months ago already, yeah. okay? And we met a few times. And you know, uh, Mrs. Ambassador, full of energy and full of enthusiasm to make things happen. And you know, uh, I'm a proof of that because I am here. Yes, <laughs> and, yes. uh, it's, and it's thanks to her. Uh, I think that this kind of people really like uh, the, amb the ambassador and other people uh, can be the reason or one of the reason that um, that uh, that uh, things are happening okay so yes for sure a uh, uh, big hug and thank you very much mrs ambassador thank you thank you uh firuz you last if you <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you will hear you hear this uh, podcast uh, and, uh, and uh, thank you very much for you for for you all your energy and uh, without you the visit of such person with in karen in uzbekistan wouldn't be uh, happened um thank you very much karen so uh see you <coughs> see you soon see you soon yes, hope. i uh, i will come soon um there is a lot to do uh from the government side uh from the industry side and after vis after visit here for two three days i can tell you that the people are so lovely here and so nice and the food is so good. Food is so good. <laughs> the food is amazing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, um, I'm sure that uh, um, um, we will see each other again and very, very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye, Karin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.